Hi, welcome again to my latest video. This is all about a very interesting puzzle which we will look at using algebra. I hope that doesn't scare you. Here's the situation. We have three people, Anna, Bina and Kara, and there are a certain number of pencils that they will share, not equally, but according to our rules. And here they are. For each person, each of them will receive half of the pencils that remain each time in addition to another half pencil. So Anna will receive half of the initial amount of pencils plus another half pencil. Bina will receive half of the remainder after Anna receives her share plus another half pencil. And Kara will receive half of the remaining pencils after Bina has had her share plus another half pencil. I hope that's not too confusing. And another very important point, no one is to end up with half a pencil. And also, at the end of the sharing process, there are three pencils remaining. So according to those rules, can we figure out how many pencils are shared? Well, we could use a trial and error approach, I guess. Let's suppose there were 20 pencils to begin with. So Anna will receive half of 20 plus another half, which comes out to be 10 and a half pencils. But wait a moment, there's something wrong, isn't there? It's broken one of the rules. We can't have half a pencil. So starting with 20 pencils was not a good idea. It doesn't work. What about if we started with 13 pencils? Anna will receive half of 13 plus another half, which comes out to be 7 pencils. This sounds more promising, doesn't it? What about Bina? Well, if Anna receives 7 pencils, there are 6 pencils remaining. So... Bina will receive half of six plus another half, which is three and a half pencils. But again, Bina seems to have violated the rule that we can't have half a pencil. So we conclude that 13 is not a answer. What approach can we take? Well, trial and error will eventually work, and you might have already figured out what the correct answer will be. But before we discuss the correct answer, let's work it out using yes dreaded algebra. So let's begin by defining some of our terms. We will let n be the number of pencils we start with and we will let a, b and c be the number of pencils Anna, Bina and Kara have respectively. Let's look at Anna first. How many pencils does she receive? If n is the number of pencils to start with, she receives half of n plus another half. And we can write that in a different way. Half a bracket n plus 1. You might want to check that. Because of, of course, means multiplication, doesn't it? How many pencils are remaining? Well, we started with n pencils. The remaining pencils will be n minus the amount Anna has shared, which is a half n plus 1. So the difference, n minus a half n plus 1, is the amount of pencils remaining, and that can be simplified. And this is what you get, a half bracket n minus 1. Let's move on to Bina. How many pencils does she receive? It'll be a half of the amount of pencils remaining, which was a half n minus 1. So it'll be a half of a half bracket n minus 1 plus another half, and that can be simplified. First of all, to a quarter n plus a quarter, and taking out a factor of a quarter, it becomes a quarter bracket n plus 1. So the pencils remaining after Bina has had her share is a half bracket n minus 1 minus a quarter bracket n plus 1. And that simplifies to a quarter bracket n minus 3. Now let's look at Kara. She receives half of a quarter n minus 3 plus a half pencils. And that simplifies to 1 eighth bracket n plus 1. And the pencils remaining after Kara has had her share is the difference shown there. And that simplifies to 1 over 8 bracket n minus 7. It's the last remainder we are interested in because that gives us the expression for the number of pencils remaining in terms of n. Okay, now remember, we know that at the end of the process there are three pencils remaining. And we also have just worked out that the expression for the number of pencils remaining at the end is 1 over 8 bracket n minus 7. So that means we can say that 
they are equivalent. That means we can form an equation. And there it is. Can you solve that equation to work out the value of n? You might be able to do it mentally, but if you have to show the steps, we can multiply both sides by 8, and that will give us n minus 7 equals 24, and then add 7 to both sides, we have n equals 31. So that means that if we start with 31 pencils and follow the rules we are given, then you'll see that there will be three pencils remaining, and none of the rules have been broken. Okay, let's apply a bit more algebra at a higher level. Let's generalize. We know 31 is an answer, but are there other values for n greater than 31 that still leave three pencils remaining if we follow the rules? The answer is no, and I will show you why. And to do that, we need to generalize our procedure. So in a similar way to what we did before, we can let n be the number of pencils we start with. But this time, instead of using the letters a, b, and c to represent the amount each person receives, we will use the symbol PN, which will represent the number of pencils the nth person receives. That means P1 is the amount of pencils Anna receives, P2 is the amount Bina receives, and P3 is the amount Kara receives. We can also let R, R subscript N be the number of pencils remaining after the nth person receives their pencils. So, for example, R1 will be the remainder after Anna receives her pencils, R2 will be the remainder after Anna receives her pencils, and R3 the remainder after Kara receives her pencils. So, we can start by saying R0 is N because at the start we haven't divided any pencils, so the remainder technically is N. And we can write that in the way that you can see there. 1 over 2 to the power of 0, bracket N minus 0. You might think, why make it more complicated than it seems, but you'll see why as we continue. Now that we know what R0 is, the first person will receive a half of R0 plus another half, and that simplifies to, and that simplifies to 1 over 2 to the power of 0, bracket N plus 1. Using that, we know that the remainder after Anna receives her share will be the initial value, R0 minus the number of pencils Anna has received, which simplifies to 1 over 2 to the power of 1, n minus 1. You can check that. Using R1, the number of pencils for the second person, P2, is a half R1 plus another half of pencil, and making the substitution for R1 from the previous line, the expression simplifies to 1 over 2 squared bracket n plus 1. And we can continue in that process. R2 will be R1 minus P1, which comes out to be 1 over 2 squared bracket N minus 3. And then P3 will be a half of R2 plus a half, which is 1 over 2 to the power of 3 bracket N plus 1. Now let's put those answers side by side so we can see if there's any pattern happening. For the remainders, R0 is, as you can see there, 1 over 2 to the power of 0, bracket n minus 0, r1, r2. Can you see the pattern, which I've summarized at the bottom in green? If we let n be the nth remainder, then rn will be 1 over 2 to the power of n, bracket n minus 2 to the power of n plus 1. That's a bit tricky, that last bit. But if you look at the numbers at the end for r0, r1, and r2, we have 0, 1, and 3. And in terms of the subscript 0, 1, and 2, you can write that as 2 to the power of n minus 1. Similarly, for P1, P2, and P3, you can see that that can be generalized to Pn equals 1 over 2 to the power of n bracket n plus 1. Have you picked up a mistake? P1 should be 1 over 2 to the power of 1, shouldn't it? And also in the first line on the left. So if you work out a half r0 plus a half and take out a factor of a half, it should be 2 to the power of 1. Okay, but we have our general result, rn equals 1 over 2 to the n and so on, and 1 for pn. So where does that lead us to? There's our expression for the remainder. Now let's apply it in our case. We know that we have three people, so n is 3, and 
we know the remainder has to be three because there are three pendules remaining. So making those substitutions, that's what it looks like. And that simplifies to what we have there. Do you recognize that equation? Of course, that's the one we had just before, didn't we? And we solve that to get n equals 31. Now, that equation, 3 equals 1 over 8 bracket n minus 7, is a linear equation. And what do we know about linear equations? If it has a solution, it only has one solution, if we ignore the infinite case. So when we get an answer of n equals 31, we know that that is the only solution possible. Now, we can generalize further. What if we have more than three people? How many pencils would we need to start with so that there are still three pencils remaining? For example, if we have four people, do you think the answer will still be 31 pencils to start with? Let's see. There's our expression for the remainder. We require a remainder of three, don't we? Now, we can solve the equation for capital N by using different values for lowercase n, as you can see there in the table. So the first line where we have 331, that means our three people, and we know the answer was 31. And another way of writing 31 is 2 to the power of 5 minus 1. If we have four people, if we solve the equation above for n equals 4, then capital N comes out to be 63, and that can be written as 2 to the power of 6 minus 1. So I've shown you several more there, up to eight people. And you can see that for eight people, you require 1,023 pencils to begin with, and that can be written as 2 to the power of 10 minus 1. And generalizing the third column, which gives us the value for capital N, we can write that as 2 to the power of N plus 2 minus 1. You might like to convince yourself of that. So that means, given any number of people, we know how many initial pencils we require so that the remainder will be 3 at the end. And graphically, there's a representation. We have the number of people along the bottom and the number of pencils we require on the vertical scale. And you can see that the graph is exponential if we join the number of points. I hope this has given you a glimpse of how important algebra is and how it can be applied to real life situations. And of course, you can extend this investigation in many different ways. For example, you might like to look at how many pencils you will need to begin with if the remainder is going to be something other than three. Until next time, bye-bye.